all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. The Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. We're getting ready for the start of action here this evening. Bob Papa along with Teddy Atlas. And Teddy, Brian Valoria is known as the Hawaiian Punch, but uh, he's lacked a lot of pop in his last couple of outings. And uh, coming off that majority decision win against Alberto Rossell, you know that Valoria wants to put forth a strong performance tonight against Moreno. Absolutely. This is the fight where I believe Valoria and his camp are looking to look good. It's not just about winning. You know, a lot of times we say here on the air, and you hear it in our sport, just win tonight, look good next time. Tonight, it's look good tonight for Valoria because of his disappointing last two timeouts, especially the fight before the last one against Lagos, which was not his fault. Lagos was with track shoes that night, running all over the ring. But it's important now for the former Olympian to shine. Yeah, Lagos, as I had mentioned, took that fight on short notice. Was not prepared for Gloria, just ran. But against Rossell, which was a rematch of a fight from earlier in the year, a third round no decision due to cuts, Valoria was lacking. Very personable young man is Brian Valoria, 230 wins as an amateur. Lands a nice combination there. Moreno tries to slap back. Moreno has a slender body, Bob. I would expect Valoria and his top trainer, Freddie Rose, the former fighter, at some point, to point that out to Valoria and for him to start working that left hook, which is his favorite punch, downstairs. Marino has lost his last two fights, but against good fighters. Been knocked out once by Gabriel Elizondo in March of 2001. Vino's last loss six months ago, nothing to be ashamed about, about losing to the Olympian and undefeated fighter, as you said, Calderon. Hands up when you step out. Both guys taking a turn toward the body. A lot of Valoria's fights have been on the East Coast. That's where his promotional group is from. We know that Valoria is strong. He has that good left hook. And we'd like to see him use it to the body. But I think what we need to see more of him is to stabilize fights and stabilize opponents with the jab. And then set up that power. Valoria stepping into things a bit here in round one. Freddie Roach, who has trained Valoria, is not with him. He's working with Mike Tyson. Valoria in the capable hands of Ruben Gomez. Valoria, for the most part, has dictated the terms here in this first of 12 against Moreno. Bob Papa, along with Teddy Atlas, glad you can join us for Friday Night Fights. Well, for Brian Valoria, Teddy, um, right now, he's a lamp that's not shining as brightly as he possibly could. How does he get more wattage in his game? It's a good question. First of all, opponents, get the right guy. At a certain point, you want the right guy to make him look good. Bring his confidence back. That's a very good question that you touch on. You want him to find himself, feel good about himself. Now, he's a former amateur world champion, former Olympian, not feeling as great about himself the last few fights. A lot expected of him. Put a guy in front of him who plays into his strengths, not his weaknesses, and let him get off, and let him shine, let him feel good. And in our main event, Devaro Williamson will be taking center stage against Robert Wiggins. That's a good heavyweight showdown. Yes, it is. Wiggins has that power, as Max talked about, and Wiggins is a southpaw. Maybe he can throw a monkey wrench into the power of the right hand, Williamson. Round number two underway for Brian Valoria and Alejandro Moreno. Take a look at the CompuBox numbers from round number one. And you see that Valoria had the edge in connects. 17 with power shots. At the controls of CompuBox tonight, Joe Conicelli and Saul Avila. Right now, that's a real good question you asked before, partner. How does Valoria just get himself on track to looking like the star that everybody has been expecting him to look like. 
I think do it simple. Don't over push. Get back to the basics. Good boxing 101. Use the jab. Like he's using now. Control rhythm. Get good position. And start letting your hands go. And find a way to get a target with that left hook to the body. Valori is going to be successful. There's certain strengths and it's face it. There's certain things that he has weaknesses about, but he's got to exploit those strengths. And some of those strengths is putting himself in position as a strong under 12 pounder where he can use that left hook, where he can do body work, where he can use those physical assets, making it that kind of fight. That's what he's doing right there. Using that jab to set up that body shot. See, this is what we didn't see the last couple fights, Bob. The jab. He was looking for all the other things, maybe too much. Seems like Freddie Roach told him, settle down, son. Get that jab working and let the other things come off that. Don't be trying to let the other things come by themselves. You hear Michael Jordan talk about that in basketball when he, when he came back. Let the game come to you. Don't try to force yourself on the game. Sometimes fighters are almost hurt, and this sounds so crazy. But they're almost hurt by their nickname. His nickname is Hawaiian Punch. And I think people expect him to go in and blast people out. It's like Eric Morrell, another Olympian from 96. Little hands of steel. But he's not a one-punch knockout guy. And maybe people almost expect more just based on the nickname. That's a good point. Cuz the model, who was my mentor, who was a great trainer, great manager, had Floyd Patterson and Mike Tyson, used to say, be careful. When you give somebody a moniker like that, first of all, make sure it fits. Because if it doesn't fit, he might spend half his career trying to live up to it. Back in the old days, Hurricane Jackson, that's fit. Because he kept throwing punches like a hurricane. Valoria eats a right hand as he threw his combination. He's dictating the terms through the first two rounds of this 12-rounder. We talked about getting back to boxing 101. Two jabs, right hand to the body, little left uppercut to the head. That's boxing 101. Exhibited by Valoria. Round three underway. Brian Valoria in the red and silver, defending his NABF flyweight crown against Alejandro Moreno from Juarez, Mexico. The numbers in round number two again favoring Valoria. He landed 17 of 35 power shots. He's hitting his power pot punches at just under 50% through the first two rounds. Nothing fancy about Marino, but tough in game. Only stopped once in 30 fights. And he's got long arms, Bob. He can give some problems if he uses that wingspan. But he's a fighter and gets inside. And when you get inside, what just happened a moment ago can happen when you're inside with Valoria. You can get hit the left hook. Marino has not been consistent with his jab. For the first two rounds, he's only landed eight of 62. And that's the punch you'd like to see used and exhibited with his height and his reach. So he has a little advantage if he stays on the outside. He can do two things. He can score and he can frustrate Valoria. He can keep him at a certain distance and either Valoria will get tattooed a little bit and then try to reach in and then Marino can get some scoring opportunities instead of putting himself in the lion's mouth and having to get those scoring opportunities by doing what he's doing there, walking right in the kitchen. He can stay outside, pepper a little bit, and if he uses that distance, which he just didn't, you saw his right foot slide in, and he's close. But if he uses that distance in that range, he can get Valoria to leave some openings. Swelling under the left eye of Moreno. Not much. Nice combination from Valoria. Valoria is showing that he not only has strength, which we want to see because of his physique, because of his reputation, because of his left hook, but he has good hand speed. And right now, that's what he's using. He's just looking to score. See those numbers through. Two minutes of round three. Valoria controlling this fight. A bit more aggressive than he was in his last outing. Seems to have a better rhythm, better tempo. You know, I was talking about a moment ago about how Marino should use his height and get his arms off at the right distance. Keep the short of Valoria outside. 
right now, Valori is turning the tables a little bit. He's playing the outside game, picking the spots, going in and out, showing that he can box a little bit. But he doesn't have to be forced to just walk in and, and be one-dimensional. Good, solid round three for the Olympian, Brian Valoria. Welcome back to the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas ringside for ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Lite. Brian Valoria to the left and Alejandro Moreno to the right at stake. Valoria's NABF flyweight crown. Brian Valoria represented the United States at the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000. Decorated U.S. amateur. Forging a professional career. Holds the NABF regional belt. Well, Valoria coming off that performance against Rossell wants a strong performance and he explains the weakness of his opponent and what he hopes to do in the fight. He's a tall guy, like he has a really good uppercut. Um, I think he's open for a left hook, um, which is my specialty. And um, uh, if I just put a punch and punches together and, and pressure, pressure me as he backs up a lot, then I'll be able to, win, um, I'll be able to take him a victory in the fight. Valoria has been able to land that left hook. You know, it's a funny thing. We're always looking for Valoria because of his physical stature, physical makeup to walk in and land that left hook. But, and that is his favorite punch, no secret about that. But the way he really likes to land it is off the counter, Bob. Valoria's real forte is to step back a little bit and entice somebody to walk in, usually missing the right hand, like he just did there. And he likes to sneak that left hook in, counter with that left hook. One of the guys with the best left hook in the business who uses it very effectively. Irish Mickey Ward. We've seen him numerous times here on this network. He's in attendance tonight. We all expected Valoria, and he just said it on that sound bite, to get inside, push back the taller, thinner, more wiry Marino. But right now, Valoria content to stay on the outside and box. Valoria doing a good job of picking off a lot of Marino's shots and moving away from any harm. <laughs> thing it hasn't been really difficult for Valoria to get in close he's done it on several occasions it's not like he couldn't do it the thing is he's done this he's allowed himself to be kind of tied up when he gets in close hasn't made the most of being inside patient pace for Valoria and Moreno as we hit the end of round four Welcome back to the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut for ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights. Round number five underway, Brian Valoria and Alejandro Moreno for Valoria's NABF flyweight belt. Take a look at the punch numbers through four. Here's a more telling number, Teddy. Valoria has landed 27 jabs to Moreno's 13. So he's done a better job with the jab against the taller man. Which is very important. As we talked about right at the outset, for Valoria to start to stabilize opponents with that jab, to make that a big part of his game. We know about the left hook, but how are you going to get in position to land the left hook? The jab. And how are you going to deal with taller fighters? The jab. Taller fighters want you to throw a left hook from too far away. They don't want you to use the jab, because that will neutralize their size and their advantage. A lot of shorter fighters sometimes forget the importance of a jab. They figure, well, God didn't give me that ability to have a long jab. I'm fighting taller guys. I'll just develop the other punches. That's wrong. All right, we're talking about Valoria. Now, remember, this is his 12th fight as a pro. 
So it's still early in the game. Let's go to Moreno, okay? If you were in the Moreno camp, uh, Valori is obviously leaving some openings here. If you were in Moreno's camp, what would you tell them? What would you tell him? You know, most of it would be emotional, believe it or not, and some technical on the back end. But I would say, you know what? You can win this fight. You know what? This guy's not Godzilla, at least not tonight. Stop respecting him so much, and let's find out what will happen if you let your hands go a little bit more, use your distance, but let those hands go in greater amounts. This guy hasn't done anything. Here you are in the fifth round. The guy hasn't done anything to scare you out of this place and put you into another state. Left hand from Valoria did score, and then he shoots a right on the inside. And of course, you would want to be respectful of not putting your hand on the stove too many times. In other words, don't lay inside, even if you're getting away with it inside, in spots. He's still the stronger guy. Try to keep your game on the outside. But make the most of it on the outside. Gloria is starting to warm up a little bit this round. And he's starting to get to Moreno a little bit, Teddy, with his power shots. And he's starting to get to the place that I think he needs to be, which is close. The only thing you'd like to see a little bit more is when he does get in close, that he stays there because he worked to get in there for a reason. He didn't get in there to say hello, peekaboo. He got in there to score. So stay there, like right now, stay there and move those hands and don't allow yourself to get tied up. Gloria trying, the end of round five. As Valoria and Moreno begin action. Well, Valoria opening things up here in round number six. See the power punches through five. Everything is in Valoria's favor number-wise and in tempo. There's still a little, let's not forget, Valoria is a guy who had over 200 amateur fights, Bob. That serves a good purpose of getting calm in the ring, but it also leaves an impression in style. You're used to fighting four rounds. You're used to fighting quick pace rounds where the emphasis is on scoring. And you've been seeing examples of that just a moment ago. He's in there just flurrying, shoe shining, looking to throw a lot of punches like he did in the amateurs to capture the judges' eyes and their scorecards. But still not settling down quite yet. Still early in his pro career where he makes the more pro fights, or more pro punches, where they're cleaner, harder, more specific punches. So you look at a 200 amateur fights and you look at the benefit of it, but you forget that some of the residual effect of that is you're used to that scoring system in amateurs, which is not to worry about power, not to worry about clean, hard, effective place punches, but just to let your hands go. And I think Valoria is still controlled by that system a little bit. Watch him when he gets inside. He's not looking to sit down and place a hard shot and maybe really do a lot of damage to Marino. He's just looking to score a lot. I think he's trying to find that. I think he's trying to, with Freddie Roach, trying to find the medium with that. Gloria was the 1999 world champion at 106 pounds. Marino throwing only a couple punches at a time. Valoria has had no problem blocking them. See, Marino can use those arms and get a little cooperation from Valoria where he'll stay outside. Marino just has to garner a little confidence and let those hands go on the outside a little bit more more consistently. Bigger punch numbers. Well, Valoria controlling the action. We're at the midway point of the bout here on Friday Night Fights. Irish Mickey Ward off those two battles with Arturo Gatti in attendance, the pride of New England. Checking things out. I spoke to Mickey earlier. This is like a Rematch with Arturo Gatti, a third fight. 
And then he says, one more and I'm done. One more and I retire. One more payday. He has given ESPN fans thrills over the years. I think more appearances than any other fighter in ESPN boxing history. See the punch numbers in round number six. Valoria in total control. Teddy has it a shutout. I have it a shutout. Moreno not doing much. But the camp of Valoria imploring him to do more and take this guy out now. In that camp going in very ably while the main trainer Freddie Roach is not here tonight training another fighter. At camp you talk about Ruben Gomez, good boxing man, good cut man, Maca Foley, and Richard Pastillo. Of course, Marino has his father, former fighter, in his corner. Also in the corner with Marino is Jose Gomez, who trained Alejandro's father, Santos Marino. So this is where you expect Valoria to dominate when he gets inside with the thinner body of Marino. You'd expect him to keep his hands free and really do business. I believe he's going to have to do that because a man must know his strengths and must know where his weaknesses are. And you, as we talked about earlier, Bob, must look to really get out, get out. shine in those strong areas, exploit those strengths. And for Valoria to be successful, when he gets in close, he has to go to the body. He has to take advantage of him being one of the stronger 112 pounders around. And there's ways to do that. When he gets inside, his mind has to be that he's going to work. Good body shot with the right hand there by Valoria. And right here, you have to make the right choice. Just watch. Valoria puts his left hand behind Marino. He, need, he needs to bring those shoulders back, rotate a little bit, and create room to punch. You can do one of two things. Find ways not to punch or find ways to punch. I believe Valoria could be the best he can be. He needs to find ways to punch every time he gets in close. Again, it's Valoria's choice. He can take steps back, create room, or not. He's controlling the fight, but the fans here at the Mohegan Sun getting edgy. Welcome back to Friday Night Fights, presented by Miller Lite. Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas, ringside, Brian Valoria, the U.S. Olympian against Alejandro Moreno. And uh, so far, Valoria controlling this fight easily. However, it has not been met with approval from the crowd here at the Mohegan Sun. They want more. See the jab numbers through seven. You see that Valoria has been more accurate against the taller Moreno, but... You mentioned in the last round, Valoria leaving some spots open. And the crowd is mentioning and noticing it too. They're mentioning it, as you say, verbally. The crowd sees and hears about an Olympic fighter. They look, they see his physical makeup, they see how strong he looks. In their mind, they couple that with electricity, with inside punching, and with explosiveness. And if they don't see it, they don't appreciate the other things that might be happening. When Valoria stands out in front and doesn't use his jab, which we've talked about, he gives Marino an opportunity when he wants to be ambitious enough to use that height, use his jab, and to have moments to score. Which he's not necessarily taking advantage of. No, that's why I said when he's ambitious enough. He's not taking advantage. Both guys are not taking advantage of what I think should be their spots, should be their times. Gloria, when he gets inside, should be doing more. And obviously, as you just said very well, Marino, when he's on the outside, should be doing more. <laughs> See, 
Deloria got inside with that jab in right hand. But then he went back outside. Now he's trying to get in again. My question is, if you're going to be coming in again, why didn't you stay in in the first place? Now this is where Valoria, I believe, as I've said many times tonight, needs to find ways to impose his strengths, which is to work to the body and move those hands and act like a shorter guy who's a stronger guy. Right now, Valoria needs to make a better choice than putting his hands behind the guy. Needs to rotate those shoulders and punch. And of course, a booze rain out as we hit the end of round eight. You roll into college hoop season, deep into conference play. ESPN, your home for all the great action of college basketball. Fans trying to get fired up here with Brian Valoria, the U.S. Olympian, and Alejandro Moreno from Mexico. No knockdown so far in the fight. All eight rounds controlled by Valoria, but a lot of empty spots from both men. I think the fans are going to be appeased. Not in this fight, in the next two fights. We have a tremendous sixth rounder coming up. The two evenly matched, real good amateur prospects, guys that were real good amateurs, guys that are good pros, young pros, true north and foreman, and then you got the heavyweights. Brown Williamson, Robert Wiggins, the heavyweights in the main event. I've talked about it before, taking nothing away from Valoria, winning this fight handily. That's the most important thing to do is get that W in the column. But I think it's important when you're a touted fighter like Valoria, as we spoke about before, to look good in spots when you have an opportunity on TV, especially coming off some fights where people weren't as satisfied as say as the Valoria people wanted them to be. Well, in his last fight, it was a majority decision win against Alberto Rossell. And it's one thing that if you're a 22-year-old young fighter without a lot of buildup and a huge promotional firm behind you, but Valoria is being touted. So the fans who buy the tickets are expecting a little bit more. They're exercising their privilege, their right, to state how they feel, to talk about what they want to see or demand what they want to see. And the, I think Valoria, I've talked about this before with fighters, with prospects, needs to become a little bit more comfortable and consistent with his identity. Punch a little low from Moreno. Steve Smoger giving it to him in Spanish. Look how he was right on the belt line. Valoria throws two hooks to the body. What I mean by that statement, consistent with his identity, Know what it is every time he gets in that ring that he's looking to do on a consistent basis. He's looking to work his way in. Do it smart, don't get me wrong. Use your jab, move your head. But is that what you're looking to do? Impose yourself in that kind of way physically and mentally? Get inside like he is now. And when you get in there, stay there. Force the other guy to find a way to get out of it. Don't let him out of it. Or you're going to be on the outside picking spots. Which way is it going to be? Another round in the books for Valoria against Moreno. The corner of Brian Valoria exclaiming, what are you waiting for? Let's knock this guy out. Valoria and Alejandro Moreno begin round number 10, 12 rounds. It's Moreno, though, who scores with the combination to the head. Valoria defending his NABF flyweight crown, 112 pounds. See the number, all the numbers are tilted heavily toward Valoria, and you'd be hard pressed to find a round to give to Moreno. Watch what I mean by identity, knowing your identity. One minute Valoria will be looking to work in like that. It's very good. And that's very good. And I believe that's what he should be doing more of and finding a way to stay there. Not allowing himself to get tied up. Not falling in. A lot of people are gonna say, Teddy, what do you expect him to do? The other guy's grabbing. Takes two to tangle. You don't have to let him grab. You can take a step back before he grabs. You know, Moreno has opened up a little bit here in round 10, Teddy, and he's landed 
probably his best punches of the fight. You know, Moreno's a funny guy. He fights as hard as you make him fight. If he, if he fought on a consistent level without making him do it, he'd be faring a lot better in this fight. But then he wouldn't be 19 and 10. That's a good point there, partner. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's a little point there. Good point. When he's forced to, he responds. But only when he's forced to. That's why he's second best a lot. Very true. But I'm talking about the identity again. One moment you got Valori and you see that identity. You say, oh, I see what he is. He's the Hawaiian punch. He's inside. He's exploring ways to get in. He's looking to set up the big shots inside. But then the next minute you say, no, he's not. He's on the outside again. And he's waiting for things and he's picking spots on the outside. Right hand over the top from below. We should mention that uh, Moreno in his last fight went 10 rounds with hot Puerto Rican prospect and Olympian Yvonne Calderon, who's not a big puncher. He's a volume guy. Good prospect Calderon. We called his fight. As you said, nice undefeated prospect. You know what I would concentrate on if I was in the corner right now for Loria Bob? What's that, Tony? He's landing the right hand actually better than the left hook off the jab. I'd concentrate on landing the right hand and finishing with the left hook. That's all I would concentrate on. Try to settle him down and concentrate just on that and see if we can pull out an explosive ending. Something to build on. Well, Moreno has opened up his offense a bit. Valoria still had the best of it, with still two rounds to go. Very good. Round 11 underway from the Mohegan Sun. You're watching ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights. Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas ringside, Brian Kenny, Max Kellerman in the studio. We'll be talking with welterweight champion Vernon Forrest this evening. Ryan Valoria, the 2000 U.S. Olympian, controlling the action. Through the first 10 rounds, you take a look at the numbers easily in Valoria's favor. But nothing to catch your eye to this point. The fans here have been restless this evening. They expect more out of the U.S. Olympian. And this is what Teddy you really don't like, is when he allows himself to get tied up. No, it's not. And not only that, but Marino helped him. Marino, as he's done throughout the night, gave up his height, charged him with punches, like this, like that. He's in close. There was an opening for an uppercut, but you have to find that opening. And Valoria is not doing that. You have to help yourself a little bit. There's that right hand I talked about. I'd like to see him finish with a left hook, and I think he still might get the knockout. A lead right hand to the ear, and Valoria gets on his toes. See, that's the punch I'm talking about. He seems to be able to get a good distance with that and be able to really find a home with that. I think he should concentrate on that punch, preferably behind the jab, not reaching in with it, and then finish with the left hook. Right there. He was just a little late with the left hook. The opening's there for him, Bob. The opportunity is still there for him to score something big. Right there, see, he's landing the right hand, but he's not coming back with the left hook. That time he reached in with the right hand, so he couldn't come back with the left hook. He didn't use his jab to set up the right hand. He was off balance. That time he overshot the right hand. He was over anxious, so he couldn't come back with the hook. He was past his man. It has to be at the right time, the right range. Right here, off the jab. There's the right hand. Now these are opportunities, see, this is a catch-22. We're gonna argue and say there's opportunities for Bologna to be consistent here. Yes, there are, for him to continue working inside, imposing himself in physical ways. But there's opportunities now for Marino to work on the outside. Bologna gives him plenty of those opportunities. But as you said, Marino doesn't have the capacity to do that in the long term. That's why, that's why he's 19, 10, and one. 
Round number 11 comes to an end. Valoria landing some of his better punches in the round, some right hands. And both men head back to their respective corner. Hey, Brian. That was your best round in the whole fight. That was your best round. I want the same thing. I want more punches. You had him hurt. Finish him off. Yeah. He's ready to give me one. No, give me one. Give me one. Give me one. Drink one. Drink the last one. Last one. We touch yeah. him in the center. Last one. Thanks, Rep. Come on, Brian. Non-stop punching. You're taking too much time off. You're hitting him. You're taking time off on him all night. This guy will go. He'll go. Come on. Let those last hands one, go. Last one. Every every second round. Combination. Give him some one. Great. Teddy, we mentioned Valoria's best round of the fight, even his corner agreed. We'll last take a look round. at some of the action <laughs> from round 11. Here's that right hand that Valoria had no right again, had no trouble finding a range and a home for. I just like to see him finish with the hook. So let's see if Valoria can close it out on our scorecards. He's got a shutout working against Moreno. Again, I would concentrate on one thing. Well, in reality, three things. Jab right hand finish with the left hook. That time, Valori was trying, was taken for granted he'd be allowed to land the right hand, and he got beat to the punch with a good right hand by Marino. All right, mate. Uh, Steve Smoger has already given Moreno a couple of warnings for the low blow, but I don't think he had the heart to take a point away at this point. Good referee. Good pro, Steve Smoger. See, right there was the opportunity, Bob. You, you could see Marino hung out there. The right hand even hung out there on the chin of Marino, just begging for the left hook to come. Would you go up there and throw the left hook? <laughs> well, his camp will watch the tape and they'll listen to your analysis. This is the first time Marino is going past 10 rounds. Hung in there, he's tried some counter shots. Now some adjustment by Valoria. Sees that he hasn't gotten rid of Marino. Knows where he is in the fight. Now just moving his hands, not for power, but as I talked about from the old amateur days. Just moving his hands. See, just moving his hands right now. Not really he's trying to place the shots. Don't forget, for years, for over 200 fights, that's what Valoria did. Just was told, move your hands, score. Yeah, he won 230 of those 238 amateur bouts. And that's how he did it, by being busy. Not having to worry about being specific with placing his punch. Which is what you want him to do more of in the pro. Well, he'll win a lot of fights in the pro game, too. With yes, he stops. will. He might still be the first of the 2000 U.S. Olympic team to win a world title. Because at this weight class, you get to a certain point, it's time to fight for a title. There's not a million guys around at 112 pounds. And he's in half of me. This is where you want to see Valoria. I don't care. The last 30 seconds of the 12th round or the first 30 seconds of the first round. You want to see him keep his hands free when he's in close with a wiry guy, a guy that he's stronger than, and find a way to punch. Well, Gloria is gonna win another decision. He's gonna remain unbeaten, but he leaves the crowd wanting more. And there's the bell to end it. Cards. Judge Robert Paulino scores about 119 109. Oh. Judge Glenn Feldman scores about 120 108. And the third judge has about 118 110. Judge George D. Gabriel for the winner. By unanimous decision, and still undefeated, the Hawaiian Punch. Right.